Okay, my friends, I was going to just do something quite simple about the digestive system and how the enzymes work breaking down things in the body. But because I happen to be a bundler, I decided, well, I am going to do the whole shoot and match. The human gut and how it creates oxidative states in molecules and enzymes and the bacteria that create the enzymes and the isotopes that are created from the enzymes created by the bacteria and how that affects your health and the probiotics that create the bacteria or to create the enzymes and the new correct dipole electron theory of how there is nothing more than dipole electrons. There's no protons, no neutrons. 1837 dipole electrons converge together and become a stable proton. That's what builds everything. But they can degrade in all kinds of different ways. Instead of 1837, you could have 1822. That's what's called an isotope. And every molecule, every atom, every, everything has isotopes. So really, it's what's going to be called the snowflake atomic model. And what it is, every electron is a snowflake. And the more you compact them together, the more heavier the molecule that it constructs will become. And it's molecules. It's not every one of these individual little pieces together. It's just a mass of particles creates a certain chemistry. Just a mass of particles. And if you heat them up and, and, and slough off and slag off some of the cheap parts, then you get to metals and so forth. That's called smelting. All you're doing is removing electrons. You're sticking them to something else and removing them with oxygen and boron and all that nonsense. You're getting them out of there. And then you're ending up with, and it's all related to how many electrons you force into that material. You don't force any, any electrons in, you know, it doesn't smell. You sit there all day. It never. You, you can have a heart that's loaded with iron. Completely loaded with iron. You're going to sit there for a hundred years, thousand years. But if you heat that sucker up to 18, I think it's 1835 degrees, something like that. I don't, I, I don't know. Don't take me on any of that. But you have to go a certain temperature and it burns off all of the cheap stuff. And then you end up with ferrous oxide. But you have to put it on a certain slant. And at a certain point, that material is what's left off and it slides right down. Or you can slough it. You know, there's different ways of, of um, extracting the metals that you want based on basically based on their weight once they go into liquid form and all the other stuff just turns into slag and slough and gets out of there now we're going to go in a little deeper because as i said all of these things come into effect but it all has to do with electron flood theory because there is nothing but electrons 100 percent electrons but we're going to start with how those electrons affect your body and your health and then remove this book, and we're going to go down to see how the enzymes work. Because the enzymes absolutely, uh, uh, electron flood uh, theory is required for enzymes to break down molecules as, as much as the, there's so many different enzymes, there's so many different molecules. They break down instantly because of the, the biology of life and the I extreme elegance of proteins and enzymes and they are only extremely elegant because a bacteria programmed those molecules and those atoms to be in a certain arrangement and they, they squirt out from these these bacteria driven ribosomes and they're little programmers, and they shoot out, and then when they all get out to there, they, they coil up, and they attach magnetically in all different forms, and that form has a way of finding things based on its form, 
and there'll be a thing here and a thing here and a thing here and all three of those have to find attachments at the same time otherwise the thing that it wants to find is not there it's not there all the three of them have to find it at the same time it may have five let's say there's three there's two whatever it is but there's a certain number of attachments that have to be in a certain sequence and they have to be found for this particular agent to attach to it like an antibody Right? It's, there's an antigen, which is the attachment factor, and it's sniffing around trying to find the molecules to kill them. And then all of a sudden it says, boop, 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 oh, there's three of them right in a row. This guy's got to get it. And then it dr literally drills a hole. It, it plunges a plunger through the membrane of that cell. They've, they've figured out what it does now. It literally shoots a, a hole and dispenses the antibody into that cell, cell's dead. All right, before we move on to the enzymes and how they break down things, don't forget, you got all kinds of enzymes, pancreatic, pancreatic juice, go, you know, the, the, your liver, your kidneys, your, um, you got bile ducts, and all kinds of things that is extreme chemistry in your, your, um, intestines you have an upper and a lower intestine your bowels are, the whole nine yards there is invasive bacteria nibbling away at the things that are coming down through you they protect themselves from toxic stuff by putting mucus they run mucus all the way down through here so all the food that's going down it doesn't, it doesn't hit you it doesn't burn you the mucus keeps it protecting you Unless you kill that bacteria, there's no mucus there. Then you get invasive, you know, um, intestines break, the walls break down. And everybody's got all kinds of problems with their guts because we don't eat right. And we've taken a lot of antibiotics and vaccines. And the kids get the MMR vaccine. I understand it's not good for the gut. And I also know that antibiotics are not good for the gut. And they, a lot of kids are getting formula that's not natural. And, it, you know, there's a lot of, you know, in, in a cesarean section, they're not even being exposed to bacteria or anything from the vaginal canal, which is there to serve a purpose. Animals actually force their kids to eat feces and, and all kinds of things like that to to get their digestive system in basically infected so that it knows how to fight back. It has to get, that's what, an, you know, I'm not going to get deep into this because we're so deep into this now that that's all you hear about now is vaccines and stuff. But your body is built to create the vaccines, but for in order for it to create the vaccine, it has to have the, ant, it has to have the bacteria that goes out looking for invaders then it has to be able to, to draw on a supply of materials that's broken down by enzymes. So the enzymes have to have bacteria. The bacteria has to live in the walls of the membranes to protect yourself from, you know, breaches through those membranes and to digest the food that's coming through there. That's their job. That's what they live there for. Now, once they're damaged, very hard to reestablish them. That's why they have people that actually have fecal transplants. They have, they get somebody else's poop that's, that's never had a problem, and they pop right back up. That's what I'm hearing. And if I'm wrong, you tell me I'm wrong, and show me a case where, it, well, I could show you a lot of cases where it does, does work. So I'm not saying go do it, don't do it, but I don't think they allow you to do it anyway. So there's a lot of regulation against things that they might, you know, work. But, you know, there's, there's sort of a, they just don't want to let you do it. All right, here's what happens with enzymes. All right, here's the deal. Your body works on chemistry. Your body works on chemistry. And that chemistry has to be fluid. It has to be moving. It has to be broken down and building and crashing and changing. So what do you have? You have bacteria in your body. And your bacteria creates enzymes. Isotopes are from enzymes. Isotopes are, are atoms and molecules that are not really complete. They're, 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 they have extra electrons, really, or not enough electrons. That's really all it is. Now, 
So the, it, the enzymes which are created by bacteria create broken molecules. That's what they do. They break the molecules so we can use them. We can build them back together to use them. Now, the molecules have to be unstable. They have to be unstable for you to be alive. If they're stable, you're dead. Stable means they're not moving gases and, and vitamins and minerals, and they just they don't do anything. They're dead in you, and you're dead. All right? Gut bacteria creates the enzymes. The enzymes, as I said, create the isotopes. The isotopes break the molecules. The molecules become unstable. You become alive. Enzymes are unstable, which means living alive. Probiotics create unstable molecules because they are you're shooting you up with enzymes. Basically, that's what they're doing. They're sending a whole batch of molecule breakers into you. That's all it is. Now, they're supposed to be living in there in the first place. But, like I say, a lot of people don't have them. Once, they, once, they, once they're gone from their, their residence areas, then, then they're hard to reestablish. So now you have, you're, you're, you're not breaking down the molecules you need to get the nutrition you need, to get the energy you need. And that leads to overweight. That leads to being overweight, because your body will crave all kinds of different things that you don't have the enzymes to break the molecules to make. So your body says, come on, do something. So, well, maybe I'll eat, I'll eat a bunch of all this other stuff. And you're, you're being driven to eat where it's not a normal thing uh, if you're getting the correct amount of nutrition from the foods you eat and you're eating reasonable foods. That's where it starts. After that, you know, you should be fine.